生一场的故事传说。Friday, top of the hour, wherever you are in this world. Once there is life, there is certainly hope. And if you have been become hopeless uh, just a while ago, uh, it's time to bounce out of that. Because we all get into that slump every now and then. You're not alone. And God has not left us alone. That is a good thing. How are you this morning? It's wonderful to be with you. It is the end of the week. Some of us say, thank God it's Friday. <coughs> because it's payday. Or thank God it's Friday. It's preparation day. Whatever your reason for. For it. No, just remember that the rivers, the trees, the mountains... The sun, the moon, the stars, everything is thanking God this morning. So, how have you been? Uh, well, I trust you have been well. <clears throat> I really trust you have been well. We can't uh, escape what is going on in the world at this time. No, we can't escape that. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we have to stay firm. We have to stay strong. This morning I want to welcome you to family worship. It is simply family worship. That's all it is. Nothing <clears throat> fantabulous. Nothing super cool as the world is looking for today it is just family worship our pioneers they huddled in huts they huddled in um, houses and they <clears throat> part the word of God they studied They study, and so the least we can do is to put some time in as we are standing on their shoulders. The least we can do to honor our pioneers' memories is to study the advanced truth of the Word of God. You know, some of us believe that just going back and do what the pioneers did. Uh, that's all is required of us. No, we are in a different time. We are in a different time zone. We are different 
message, a different part of the gospel that we have the responsibility of. <clears throat> and that's the end. The most solemn aspect of the message is what we have been given. No, the pioneers didn't get that. Noah didn't get that. Moses didn't get that. It's the people in the last days, as I have been telling you from time to time, it is those who have written the prophecies, wrote more for the latter days than for the former days. <clears throat> they have written more for our times, the last days, than for their time. It is simple to see. It is easy to see. <clears throat> if you just think about it and take a closer look at the Word of God, so why shouldn't we pay close attention to the prophecies of this time? And that's why we are in the family worship, <clears throat> Seven Powers Bible Prophecies. It is going on now. Uh, the seal and the sealing of God and the mark of the beast, Revelation chapter 7, 1 to 4, and Revelation <clears throat> 7, verse 9. And of course, Revelation 13, with the torn beast, right up to Revelation 17, the scarlet colored beast. All those details you will get. You will get to understand and you will get to study, uh, not to believe if you don't wish to believe, uh, <clears throat> because God doesn't force any of us. But it's our freedom of choice. The next one we want to look at, number two, is the separation of the tears. God's soul is, is weak. And the evil door saw the tears among the wheat. But before Christ comes the second time, he will have to do a separation. He will have to do a purification of his, among his people. He will have to do what we call a judgment, really. Because they are similar. <clears throat> Number three, the message of Elijah for this time. Who will come, or who has come in the spirit and power of Elijah? That is critical. <clears throat> because the last message is what we are about. You can read all my <clears throat> tenets online and just stay tuned. Number four, <clears throat> the four beasts and the twenty-four elders. We shall be looking, and we started to look in the courtroom of heaven. <clears throat> you are familiar with courts, even if you have never been to the courtroom, you are familiar. Because you jump on YouTube every day and you've been watching the latest uh, Trump and Fanny Lewis <laughs> in, um, <clears throat> in um, the city of... Uh, what not, I remember, Atlanta, and you've been watching all these Supreme Courts all around the world, um, especially, especially in, in America, the highest court. It is a semblance of what, what is in heaven, what we are focusing on when we get into the sanctuary as the Lord has instructed struck that off. That his ways is in the sanctuary. Number five, the forty years wilderness journey of the last days. Ezekiel chapter four, basically. Well, we usually go to the history and then we see the prophecy. Number, five, number six, the Lamb and the Book. 
You don't want to miss the Lamb and the book. Because that book is the book of life. And names will be deleted and names will be retained. And we prefer our names to be retained in that book. I can guarantee you that. <clears throat> Number seven, the Great Alliance and the War. World War II becoming World War III, the Confederacy. Have you heard about the Confederacy? Well, it's an alliance that God doesn't like. Anciently, uh, we remember that the 12, the 12 tribes were divided in two. One go north, one go south. And the one in the north was uh, started out with this, the, uh, the, uh, <coughs> the servant of Solomon. He was called... Rehoboam, no, Jeroboam, Jeroboam, his son Rehoboam was called, uh, well, uh, had the two tribes, and they went south, but you know it developed because both kingdoms are both uh, sections of the kingdom had kings, kings that were in their own stead, kings of the twelve tribes, kings of the two tribes. Uh, Jerusalem, excuse my e-cup, here in my lung, my whatever. Jerusalem was the capital of the two tribes in the south, and Samaria was the capital of the ten tribes in the north. But God has promised to bring those twelve tribes together, and that's our message. The twelve tribes, where we'll have 144,000. If you think it's a controversial su subject, well, there's no controversy with it. All right. <clears throat> this morning we want to look at one of these very points. And that is in conjunction with the seal of God and His judgment, He always sends a message <clears throat> at the forefront. And so we want to look at certain messages. The last time we look at the judgment, the execution, the sequential execution of God's judgment from the beginning to the end. It will climax in the wrath of God, which will involve the seven last plagues. You are aware of that, or <clears throat> so this morning we want to talk about messages. Oh. So, since we're talking about messages, I guess uh, this time we'll pray, because we'll just dive into that for a moment. The time is far spent. Oh, come, let, let us bow down, let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Pray with us, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, or the night for some, or the morning for uh, the other day for some, but whatever it is, we're all one brothers and sisters, and so we are together in, thi in this. We're all together in this. And so we are mindful of that. We are careful to pray for one another and to encourage one another. And this morning, it is not in us to do, do that, so we ask thee that they'll do it through us. <clears throat> 
and teach us what we ought to learn in this session in Jesus name Amen God bless you thank you again welcome to family worship the seven, seven powers uh, Bible prophecy series going on now <clears throat> all right so let's start with this let's start with this if you are somewhere where you can see my screen I know on social media you can <clears throat> jump here and there and everywhere so why don't join me on Facebook if you want to see my screen? Uh, otherwise, it will be YouTube or somewhere else there. On my screen this morning is what is the message that will call the people out of Babylon? Ah, I guess you jump on that right away. It is the three angels' mes messages of Revelation chapter 14. <clears throat> All right. Yes, it is the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 14. So the next question, follow. Are we calling the people out of Babylon today? Oh yes, we are calling the people out of Bab Babylon to accept the Sabbath truth and come into our church. That's your answer, right? <clears throat> that's, that's a common answer. Well, hmm. I'm not going to burst your bubble, but Babylon... Babylon's domain is described as a scarlet colored beast when a woman will be riding or leading the world, ruling the world, this world. <clears throat> now, let me put this to you. The message that we have, it says Babylon is falling, is falling. Do you know the significance of that? Oh, well, let me remind you of the significance of that. William Miller got this message. You know, the angels, the angels' messages are always transpire or transition to men and then men will tell it to men because you don't talk with angels right you never spoken with angels and if you do it's not too frequent it would not be too beneficial to us to talk to angels they may talk to you in your dream and that's for you that's not to share for me and anybody else unless it is um, interpreted by Daniel the prophet or somebody like that. So let's put that aside. The message of William Miller, Babylon is falling, is falling. We will see somewhere along the line in this series that Babylon start to fall when God stopped sending messenger or calling messengers from Babylon. Babylon will, will completely fall when she makes all nations drink of the wrath. So Babylon started to fall but she will eventually fall just about what we refer to the period before the seven last plagues or Babylon will fall when she come into existence after the ecumenical movement would have come together uh, then the woman 
as you have seen, sitting on seven heads, will move to the back of the scarlet colored beast. Read Revelation chapter 17. Now, when God whenever God describes a beast as scarlet, it is depicting not just Rome as people single it out to be. This is the future world, and it involves all the systems, but all the systems of the world, except God's church, of course, because that's why God will have to separate his church, I mean, separate tears from his church now because if the tears were to continue with the, the wheat they would they would not survive Babylon I told you that the church's test is different from the mark of the beast when the mark of the beast is set up, in reality, that will be the scarlet colored beast. It will be Babylon in full force, not some theory, theoretical confusion that we talk about. Babylon will have a domain, and Babylon we love laws, and that's death decree, as we know it. And Babylon will enforce worship. If you want the history, just go back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the death decree that was made, I told you God never has never left us without a point of reference. Go back <coughs> to the land of Shinar the, the, the domain of Dura where Babylon called all the people all the kingdoms to worship the image and those who don't didn't bow would be thrown in the fiery furnace do you believe that that is just <clears throat> an apistant and uh, just a uh, a little blip in our history? No. It will repeat itself. And that's what it's called the image of the beast. That's when worship on God's Sabbath or man's Sabbath will be decided. <clears throat> Alright, so let us be clear about that. Babylon is yet to come. Again, let me go back to the scarlet colored beast. And every, whenever time God describes something as red, you know, the red dragon is totally in the domain of the devil, sin. A scarlet colored beast means that that domain will be without Christ or his people. They will be totally for the devil. But God's people will be in it. God's people will be among them. And that is why the Bible says, not our tradition or our theory, the Bible says that God will have a people to call Make a loud cry to call the people out of Babylon to a different domain. 
You have to visualize these things, you know, practical. These are not just spiritual stuff. Practically, God will have to separate his church first, then he separate his people from Babylon. Other sheep that I have, which are not of this fold, this fold, this fold. They will also come. When will that be? Well, that's the time. It's not now. Don't, don't look at this because the church that we think we are calling people in are worse than domain. What we think Babylon is. More hip hypocritical. The word of God says God is not working now to bring many into his fold. And that's why we get carried away with this evangelistic thing and <clears throat> are going overboard with it, but it's the plan of man. Uh, we have to fall in line with God's plan. When, Miller, when William Miller handed over the button to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they were told, to prophesy to many, not all. So what has happened is that men or man has run ahead of God and start making hive. They can't make honey. And that's why you see the evangelistic work is <clears throat> going as it's going. You may believe, you may, you may say it's, it's a lot... Um, you're making grounds, you um, There's a great success in evangelism today. Not in God's sight, not in God's way. All right, so this morning our purpose here is to look at the messages because we must know the messages that God sends to us. And I'm going to start with one way that the church has slipped off the track and the people have slipped off and it's the same <clears throat> book that we have the common book among us that we don't read we talk about it but we don't read or share what is in the great controversy and so this morning I want to bring to your attention a very very vital point that you must be aware of now, we're talking about messages. Messages, seal, and then execution. Messages, seal, judgment. Messages, seal, judgment. That's the love of God to us, for us. Reading in your hearing. Revel um, great controversy, three... 83 that's the one that we read from every day and give out or we claim we read and we claim we give out sometimes we make we make excerpts we give a little of this and that, that, that but we're not touching the main points of the great controversy this morning we shall touch a main point and i want you to listen carefully and read with me 388 of the Great Controversy. The message of Revelation 14 announcing uh, the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure and have become corrupt. Listen to me carefully. This is the Great Controversy. What does that mean? The message of Revelation 14, that's our message, announcing the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure <clears throat> and have become corrupt. So God has acknowledged that the Babylon has taken over from his pure church. Really, that's all it's saying. That when he left his church here, Babylon intervened 
because the people inside after the leaders like Peter, James, John and all of them who stood up against Ananias and Sapphira and make sure that sin wasn't tolerated in the camp. That was crushed because that wasn't too popular for men. So they watered down the standard of God. And when Constantine came into the church, 3-something A.D., Constantine didn't have a problem. He didn't have a problem because the leaders welcomed him. And he was able to welcome the pagans and paganisms that we celebrate today, Easter, Christmas, Blah, blah, re, re, this day, that day, my day, your day, Valentine's we just celebrate. All of those have bombarded God's church. <clears throat> so when we read, we must read with understanding. He came into the church and he was able to bring his pagans, those who did not want to come freely, he bribed. So he gave them a white robe, make them make some sanctity out of the pagans, and he gave them 20 pieces of gold. And he promised them freedom from slavery. That's how the pagans flood the church. <clears throat> Those who didn't take, up, take him up on that bargain, they were forced, literally forced to join the church and big up the church now. People now flood the church. So the word of God is saying the message of Revelation 14, the three angels' message, announcing the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure and have become corrupt. Mark the message. We are looking at message this morning. <clears throat> Since this message follows the warning of the judgment, when last you heard about judgment? Since this message follows the warning of the judgment, it must be given in the last days. <clears throat> Therefore, it cannot refer to Rome man church alone. For the church has been in a fallen condition for many centuries. All right. I want you to fasten your seatbelt. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of Revelation, that's the Lord cry. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of the Revelation, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. And that's finished. Something is missing, and I'll tell you what is missing. Follow me. <clears throat> now, in the original con Great Controversy, uninspired men are men who are in the church, just like Constantine, or just like those who invited Constantine have always been deceptive. And that's what we have to watch for at our pulpits, in our pulpits. These deceptive men in leadership in our church has deleted this line. Look carefully on this line. 
this line said in a message that is yet future so let's go back here that line should be <clears throat> uh, the book should read <clears throat> furthermore in the 18th chapter of Revelation you see I put some dots there in a message that is yet future a message they have covered up the message by deleting that from the great controversy so the great controversy you have today even though <clears throat> They claim to be giving it out. They have deleted the word of God to suit their style. You want more evidence? All right, follow me. <clears throat> I'm going now to 1888 edition of the Great Controversy. Same page. <clears throat> and let me tell you this. Just hop online and pull up the great controversy if you pull up the great controversy you will get what the church used today if you pull up the 1880, 18, 1888 edition edition you will get what the church doesn't use all right <clears throat> i'm going to read in your here in the 188 88 edition edition of the great controversy the one that we should be using it says I'm reading the same paragraph the message of Revelation 14 announces the fall of Babylon must apply to religious bodies that were once pure and have been corrupt become corrupt since this message follows the warning of the judgment it must be given in the last days. Therefore, it cannot refer to the Roman, Romish church, for that church has been in a fallen condition for many centuries. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of the Revelation, in a message which is yet future for the church, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. It is telling us that in Revelation 18 is a message to call the people out of Babylon given to Seventh-day Adventists. Where is that message? They have deleted it. Go, to, go online. <clears throat> That's the privilege that we have these days, brothers and sisters. Hop online. Hop on the world wide web. It's, it's God's tool. Pull up the great controversy. Pull up the 1888 edition of the great controversy. And you will see the difference on page 383. Don't take my word for it. You will see that our church has deleted. Has deleted has deleted the Word of God. I'm going to show you something else. <clears throat> well, let me read this continuation. According to the Scripture, many of God's people must still be in Babylon. And in what religious bodies are the greater part of the followers of Christ now be found, to be found without doubt in the various churches professing the Protestant faith. At the time of their rise, these churches took a noble stand for God and the truth and His blessings was with them. Even the unbelieving world was constrained to acknowledge the beneficent result that followed an acceptance of the principle of the gospel. 
In the words of the prophet of Israel, the renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I have put upon thee, saith the Lord. But they fell by the same desire, which was the curse and ruin of Israel, the desire of imitating the practices and courting the friendship of ungodly, the ungodly. Though didst trust in thine own beauty and place the harlot because of the renown. Ezekiel 16, 14 and 15. So you see, what we are looking at here is even though when the Protestant churches found out the truth, they rise to the standard of God. But sooner or later, brothers and sisters, and watch this, <clears throat> that's why today we have what is referred to as the Protestant world, the Western nation, <clears throat> Western nations are coming from here. Coming from here, coming from the Protestantism, rising to the standard of God, influence the world, the nations, and so, of course, as Protestantism fell, they still hold on to the name, yes, they still hold on to the name Protestant churches, Protestantism, but in God's eyes today, it is apostate Protestantism. Apostate Protestant Church, apostate Protestant nations. <coughs> what are they protesting against? Good question. Well, our church has fallen to such a great hem of trying to Be with the world, be with the populace, they have deleted God's message. Deleted God's message. Our attempt, attempt, because they can't do that. <clears throat> they can't soil God's plan. Uh, well, you can always sit comfortably in church and say, okay, everything is sailing to Zion. It's not. It's not in the condition, and that's why we have to step up on our own. You can't be saved by a group or a church. You have to save on yourself by looking into what the Word of God says. So, all right. <clears throat> now that we have heard that, we will go on to Revelation I mean, early writings, 277, and you will see <clears throat> the message as it corresponds with, um, as it corresponds with Revelation chapter 18. But before I go to early writings, 277, I want to show you another deception among us. In the book that we have been reading, <clears throat> And as I, tell, as I told you, if you are not in the spirit of prophecy, you are in the church, but you are drifting from the church. Big time! If you are in the Seventh-day Adventists and you don't believe in the spirit of prophecy, you are not in the church. You are drifted. You have gone off track. You have somewhere else. You are in the church as a body, but that's all. Now, I want to show you something. We deal with the messages this morning. <clears throat> In this book, Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers. Do you think that's a book that the ministers and the gospel workers, the elders, all of them doing evangelistic? Do you think that this is a book that they should hold dear to their chest? 
I would think so, but no. <clears throat> they are holding the Bible and thank you, darling. And pretending as if they know the Bible uh, solo scriptura. The gossip of my dandelion here. So what's up? Why is it there? So what's up? <laughs> okay, fever grass. All good. All good herbs. Brothers and sisters, this is this is this is a really a moment that you don't want to miss because <clears throat> You may not pass this way again. Don't take chances. Now, the book Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, and all the testimonies, of course, were written for the Church and for our guidance. This is what we have in our time. God has, in every age, throughout Israel, he has prophets and kings. They couldn't do without him. And yet still they couldn't survive, they couldn't stand, they had to... The heathen um, were so strong, the heathen influences were so strong that they, 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 they just kept sinning against God. So you believe today, you can just, oh, all I know is the Bible and God, 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 love, God, grace, God, this, God, that. No, that won't work. It won't work. You are being deceived and you will be trapped and you will find yourself in a place where you know not what. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring you back to um, <clears throat> the book Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers and if you recall we read that about the message of Elijah but I'm going, I'm just going to all the messages that you should understand. So that when we come back here, you don't have a problem. <clears throat> so, testimonies to ministers and gospel workers, 475. <clears throat> and if you recall, we read that, but I'll read it in your hearing again. Four seven five. It's under the caption Let Heaven Guide. Let Heaven Guide. <clears throat> what did my book read so far? That's TM four seven five. <clears throat> Uh, the page, but it just slipped me. But anyway, <clears throat> 475 is based on Malachi 4 and verse 5. Behold, 5 and 6, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet <clears throat> before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse 6 tells us that somebody will come in the spirit and power of Elijah and, when, and of course he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and so on. We have gone through that so if you want to search for that tape or <clears throat> wait until we get around to it again. But for this morning, this is all you need. If you are stopping by the first time, this is what you need. On 475 of the testimony says, <clears throat> again it quotes the scriptures under the topic, subtopic, let heaven guide. Let heaven guide. <clears throat> I read in your hearing, prophecy must be fulfilled. The Lord says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Comment. Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. 
And when he appears, masculine gender, personal pronoun, when he appears, not Ellen White herself, she was pointing to another prophet for our church, for our time. She said, when he appears, men may say you are too earnest. You do not interpret the scriptures in the proper way. Let me tell you how to teach your message. Now I'm focusing on message, and that is why <clears throat> I bring you back to this. Now, <clears throat> as soon as you have said message, you will see a little, what they call it now, <clears throat> asterisk and a writing with that said C appendix and you're familiar with this because all over the books you see C appendix now in addition to the great controversy I'm going to show you another one and there are others but these two will suffice for this morning now on this very page regarding this very comment about Elijah's message there's an appendix for you to go and see uh, <clears throat> if it says see appendix you go to where you find indexes or those things so let us go there for a moment. <clears throat> ah, it should say appendix. And I have been, I've, I'm now in appendix, appendix, index, what not, to the back. <clears throat> At appendix, I have appendix notes, all right? So follow, follow me carefully. Appendix notes. So what you do, you go to appendix notes and you are looking for that page that you need to get some enlightenment. But mark you, <clears throat> see appendix in the spirit of prophecy would be uninspired men, unauthorized men, editors, what not, they go in the book of God and they put a little asterisk and send you off on a journey. I can tell you it's a journey of deception. Appendix is a journey of deception. Now, when I come to appendix, I look up the same page, 475, and I'm going to see the explanation to counteract or to debunk inspiration. That's what we are up against. You can also go online and find this. <clears throat> but if you have a book, just go to it now. I'm going to give you the explanation. <clears throat> now I search appendix notes and here I come to 475. Let's read together. Somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. That's the Bible. These words have been mistakenly applied by some to some individual who it was thought would appear with a prophetic message huh. remember you know Inspiration says somebody is to come in the spirit and power of Elijah. Um, I should have that up there so that you can see it and 
you know where I am. But anyway, I have early writings, so I'm gonna just stop sharing early writings so that you don't get carried away with that. What I'm saying, I have the book and I'm reading from the testimonies. And now I am looking at the appendix. They're giving a, an explanation on top of God's explanation. And their explanation is that these words have been mistakenly, by whom? Mistakenly applied by some to some individual who it was thought would appear with a prophetic message subsequent to Mrs. White. You hear that? Subsequent to Ellen G. White life and work. So what they're saying now, they are claiming to believe Sister White when they don't believe Sister White. But they're throwing that on you, throwing that wool over your eyes, throwing up that smoke screen to throw you off. Don't get thrown off. They are sending you into some notes that they have put in the back of the testimonies. And they are saying that she... So there's a mistake to say that it's somebody else except Ellen White. So in other words, let's go back to the page and read. The page said somebody, the Bible said somebody, Mike Malachi 4.5, somebody will come in the spirit of Paul Elijah. The book explains and says somebody is to come. And when he is come, a man, he will have a message. But he will be opposed. So <clears throat> the question is, is there another prophet to the Seventh-day Adventist church? The answer is yes. Elijah. Because we plan to be, we know that we are going to be Elijah's, Elijah's but we will be Elijah's helpers to prepare the way of the second coming. But they jumped on that and put on top of the word of God that it is a mistake to think that there will be somebody else with a message. What you, what you make of that? You see, we can't, we can't mince word now or we can't believe, we can't speak with water in our mouths. We have to speak the truth, brothers and sisters. This is a life and death situation. People in our churches have been deceiving the people with the word, the clear, plain word. The last time we were on the sixth trumpet, and the explanation that I heard from some theory is that the sixth trumpet are killers. Of course, it is coming from a book called Thoughts on the book of Daniel and Revelation by Uri Smith. So all these are these deep-seated deceptions. Uriah Smith wrote his book and he called it Thoughts. We come and we take off thoughts and we call it Daniel and Revelation. 